Kepler Space Telescope was a marvel of engineering, expanding our understanding of exoplanets by detecting more than 2,000 alien worlds. Among them were such promising worlds in the life-friendly zone like Kepler-186f and Kepler-22b. In addition, with Kepler-90, the telescope discovered a solar system that bears resemblance to our own. Launched from Cape Canaveral on March 7, 2009 on a Delta II rocket, it was named after the German astronomer Johannes Kepler because he was the first to recognize the correct orbits of the planets around the Sun and derived the three laws of planetary motion from this knowledge. Two of the three laws were published in 1609, 400 years before the launch of Kepler's mission. Kepler's third law still helps today to determine the size of an exoplanet's orbit from its recorded transits. The Kepler Space Telescope was placed in an Earth-trailing heliocentric orbit so that our planet would not affect the observations. A mission of this type was first proposed by Bill Barocki and Audrey L. Summers in April 1984 in an article entitled The Photometric Method of Detecting Other Planetary Systems in the American Astronomy Society's official publication Icarus. NASA's Ames Research Center also held workshops on this topic beginning in the mid-1980s. Nevertheless, some setbacks had to be accepted because even if people were open to the idea, applications for such a space telescope were rejected several times. For example, the scientists involved first had to show through laboratory tests that the CCDs were precise enough and that a photometer could monitor thousands of stars simultaneously whilst also having the resolution to detect Earth-like planets. In addition, the original idea of an orbit on one of the Lagrangian points was discarded in order to downsize the propulsion system that would have been needed to keep the telescope at that point, thus further reduce costs until December 2001 when the mission was finally approved. It was part of NASA's discovery program and was the first mission by the US Space Agency to deliberately search for Earth-sized extrasolar planets that, unlike the super-Earths discovered so far, are only half to twice the size of our blue planet. Kepler permanently looked at the star-rich Cygnus Lyra region within the Milky Way, which also had the advantage that our Sun could not sparkle during the whole mission duration only once a month when it transmitted scientific data via its K-band to the deep space network on Earth, it looked in another direction. Originally, the telescope was to have been equipped with a high-gain antenna HGA with a gimbal, but a different decision was made in March 2006 to save costs and reduce complexity. Therefore, the antenna was located directly on the spacecraft. This reduced the chance of error, but resulted in the loss of one day of observation per month because the entire spacecraft had to continuously rotate to transmit data. The telescope surveyed over 100,000 main sequence stars for telltale signals coming from planets. The mission was managed by NASA's Ames Research Center, while the development of the system was led by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL. The basic framework was built by Ball Aerospace and Technologies Corp of Colorado. The CCDs came from E2V of the UK, and the key components for the photometer came from Corning Incorporated of New York, which is best known for its Gorilla Glass for the iPhones of the world. The Kepler Space Telescope had a 1.4 meter wide primary mirror made of Corning's ultra-low expansion glass a titanium silicate glass with near-zero expansion characteristics that's widely used in space applications. It also had a 0.95 meter wide photometer for measuring the brightness of celestial bodies with an exceptionally large field of view of 105 square degrees and a 95 megapixel detector, 42 CCDs with 2200 times 1024 pixels. It uses broadband photometry, which, unlike narrowband photometry, records the entire spectrum rather than measuring individual spectral lines. The telescope was designed to operate at a temperature of 40K, minus 233 degrees Celsius, whereas the detector required an even lower temperature of 8K, minus 265 degrees Celsius, so as not to be affected by the telescope's own heat and also to detect the faint light of distant planets. To prove an Earth-like planet beyond doubt, at least three transits with the same period, abundance and duration had to be recorded. In the case of our planet, this would take at least three years.
Kepler discovered that the majority of exoplanets are larger than Earth, but smaller than Neptune. In addition, it found that exoplanets can orbit two, three, or even four stars with relative ease. In particular, Kepler 16b is reminiscent of a famous scene from Star Wars, where Luke Skywalker watches a binary sunset on Tatooine. In May 2013, it was revealed that there were technical problems because the second of the four gyroscope-like reaction wheels had failed and Kepler would have needed at least three for regular operation. Similar problems with the reaction wheels manufactured by Ithaca Space Systems in Ithaca, New York, have occurred in the past on other missions, such as NASA's Far Ultraviolet Spectroscopic Explorer in 2001 and Japan's Hayabusa mission in 2005. Because of this, the original mission could not be continued, so NASA and Ball Aerospace engineers came up with the idea of K2 Second Light, using the Sun's radiation pressure as a third reaction wheel. Photons of light from a distant star field were collected over a 30-minute period and produced an image quality within 5% of the primary mission image quality. On December the 18th, 2014, NASA announced that the K2 mission had detected its first confirmed exoplanet, a super-Earth named HIP 116454b. When the fuel ran out in October 2018, NASA retired this mission. Thank you for your attention. If you like this video, leave us a like or a comment and check out one of our other videos about space telescopes.